mid-gut neuroendocrine tumors or and, and the actual label for Lutathera is basically neuroendocrine tumors from below the diaphragm. Um, and it, it really should be considered when patients have had some degree of progression or some sort of evident tumor growth, uh, usually radiographic, but also I would consider it in significant clinical progression where people's symptoms were significantly worsening. Uh, while they're already on somatostatin analogs like lanreotide or octreotide LAR. Um, so in the, this is not a, a treatment that should be considered right up front except in very special and select circumstances. Um, it probably shouldn't be considered all the way at the end of the treatment algorithm either. It's probably going to be something that works right in the middle. Um, but generally the, the right spot is for somebody who is showing clear growth of their tumors on somatostatin analogs. It's still difficult to get access to. Uh, that's a big problem. It's not easy to administer the treatments. It requires a lot of training. Um, it is uh, an expensive medication and one that's very, uh, that, to be honest, insurers don't really understand at this point. Uh, patients don't quite understand and then providers don't really know exactly where to sequence it. Uh, even those of, uh, that see a lot of neuroendocrine tumors, we're not exactly sure where it needs to go in a patient's treatment landscape. And because of that, with it being so new, um, it's a little bit challenging to figure out exactly where it fits. It is a very useful tool. The data is extremely compelling, uh, and it is certainly here to stay. I think exactly where it's going to be used and how it's going to be used for patients is still a little unclear in the United States. Uh, it's a little bit more well-established in Europe.